everybody. Welcome. It's good to see you all today. Thanks for joining me. I'm Debbie with Rocky Mountain Lodge, and thanks for being patient with our technical difficulties. Facebook is changing their layout, and I'm having a little trouble with that. Anyway, today we are going to be making my family's favorite strawberry shortcake and some lemon fruit dip to go along with that. And you can find these recipes, both of them are in my cookbook, Rocky Mountain Lodge and Cabin's More Favorite Recipes, which you can purchase this cookbook on our website, RockyMountainLodge.com, and click on the gift shop tab. We also have a half off special right now, so you can get this for $10, and it also includes an ebook version, so you can have it on your phone, uh, when you're out and about, on your tablet, on your computer, your laptop. So go ahead and purchase that today. These recipes are in there. There's a total of 500 recipes in there. You can also find these recipes on our website, RockyMountainLodge.com, and click on the Recipes tab. So let's go ahead and get started today. So we're going to start with our lemon fruit dip today. Only three ingredients for this. Super easy to make. What we have here in this bowl is just one package. Uh, 3.4 ounce, it's a small package of lemon pudding mix, the instant one. So we have a package of that right here in this bowl. And then we have one cup of cold milk. Doesn't matter what kind you use, you can use whole milk, skim milk, low fat milk, 2%, it doesn't matter. You can even use um, lactate milk or even um, almond milk if you want to. And so we're just going to stir these up until it starts to thicken, just for about a minute. It doesn't take very long at all. You can serve this when it's all done. I like to put it on in like little custard cups, little tart cups, that, and then you can put some fruit on that. You can serve it just with fruit itself. You can even put it on these little strawberry shortcake like we're going to make here in a minute. So this has started to thicken pretty quick and easy. And so now I'm just going to add one cup of sour cream to this and this is what's going to make it super creamy all right so it's just those three ingredients the pudding mix the milk and the sour cream and so we're just going to mix this up and then we're just going to set this aside until it sets it only takes a couple of minutes but i just wanted to get this started and ready so i can put it on our shortcakes a little bit later all right and so that is done, pretty easy. You can let that set and I also like to serve it with fresh fruit, which I have right here. I've got some strawberries there, a little bowl, and I'm just gonna put some of this in here. And so you can just dip your fruit right in there with that fruit dip, super fast and easy. You can make this ahead of time and let it sit in the refrigerator or if you're in a pinch, you can just make it right away and it's actually ready to serve right now since our milk was cold. All right, so there's our lemon fruit dip. Quick and easy, all done. I'll set this aside for our shortcakes. All right, and so now we're gonna move on to our strawberry shortcakes. So what we're gonna start with is I have um, a quart of strawberries right here that I already have sliced. And then to this, I'm gonna add a half a cup of sugar, which I have somewhere. I did have, oh, right here, thank you. <laughs> I always like to say, if my head wasn't attached, I'd lose it. So here's a half a cup of sugar. We're gonna add that to our strawberries. And we're just gonna stir this up. I like to do this ahead of time, like an hour or two ahead of time, just so that the strawberries can get all mixed up with the sugar and then they start to macerate, which means they just basically start to break down. And so I'll set this aside, but you can see that I already have some that I've done. I did these about two hours ago. And this is what happens after they've been macerated. You can see they make their own syrup right there. So this is what I like to add into my shortcakes or pour over my shortcakes later on. And so, but I do this ahead of time. That's the first thing I do and let that set, sit aside, set aside so that those strawberries can macerate. And that's really important. Yes, because we like that juice to get all into our biscuits later on. So now we're going to move on to the shortcake part. This is my family's favorite recipe for the shortcake. And so we're just going to start with just a few ingredients. We have two cups of flour here that we're going to put in our bowl. 
I have my oven preheated to 425 degrees. Make sure that's nice and hot before you get started. And then to this, we're going to add two tablespoons of granulated sugar. Is that sifted flour? It is sifted flour. I sifted it ahead of time. But you don't have to have it sifted. But I like to sift it. But I'm actually going to sift all of this together again. I'm going to whisk it together. This is three teaspoons of baking powder. And then one teaspoon of salt, granulated salt. Well, I guess granulated sugar. Salt's always granulated, right? <laughs> so now I'm just going to whisk these together. So they're all blended and help whisking it also kind of helps lighten that flour again. Kind of like sifting it so you can just whisk it. And now, right here, I have one third of a cup of shortening. This is butter flavored shortening. This is probably what helps to make them taste so good. You can just use regular shortening if you don't have butter flavor, it's just fine. I use regular whenever I don't have the butter flavor on hand. And so for this, I am just gonna cut these in with my little pastry blender. If you don't have a pastry blender, just use two, for, uh, two knives, just two butter knives to cut this in. You can even use your fingers and your hands. You just want to get all of this shortening mixed into your flour mixture until it gets to be like the size of peas. It just takes a minute or two, not very long. These shortbreads are super easy to make. When I was growing up, my mom always bought the sponge type ones that you can find in the, veg in the produce section by the strawberries. This time of year you can find them everywhere. They're the little round sponge ones that have like a little hole dented in the middle of them. My mom always did that, but when I started to make those myself, I thought they got too soggy. And so I ended up switching to this biscuit type recipe that I found, or that I've been using for years. I think this actually is my biscuit recipe. It actually, not that I don't think it is, it is my biscuit recipe. But I'm gonna put a little bit of a change to it here in a minute jazz it up a little bit so there's our mixture and then we are just going to take a fork and we are going to add three quarters of a cup of milk to this right here and we're just going to mix these up it'll be pretty wet and sticky you're going to want to have some flour on hand so we're going to flour our hands and then we're going to flour the table or our board, whatever we're using. I used to have uh, kitchen countertops that were tile. And so you have all those little grooves. I couldn't stand that. So I always would have a cutting board on my counter to, to work with because I didn't have a smooth service, surface. All right, so you can see this is pretty wet. It's pretty well blended. And so now I'm just going to flour my surface right here so these don't stick and now I'm going to just flour my hands again get that fork out of there we're done with that we're just going to bring this together into a ball and it's pretty wet and soft so I'm just gonna bring it into a little ball here just enough to make it all stick together I want to get all of that out of there now this is gonna make about six shortbreads, a medium-sized shortbread. Um, so it'll serve six people. And then I'm just gonna pat this out. I'm not even gonna bother with my rolling pin. I'm just gonna pat it. It's okay if you have little cracks and crevices in there. So and I want this pretty tall right here. I don't want it really flat because I want them to puff up and be really tall so that I can break it in half or cut it in half when they're done. Let me wash my hands here. But I'm going to want to cut that in half after it's cooked. And I've got some that are done that I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so these are done here. And so I have three different sizes of my biscuit cutters right here. I like to use the middle size one. Because once we have them doubled up in height, it becomes a lot of biscuit. So I'm just going to cut this in two. I should have floured that first. <laughs> By flour at first it wants to, and then I'm just going to set them on my cutting board which is not greased 
and I set, try to set them close to each other so that way they don't spread apart. And we should get six of these. Looks like I can try to get another one out of this. I like to get as many as I can first time around. Okay. Because every time you roll it out, it becomes not quite as tender. But when I roll them back up again, I just kind of like to bring it down underneath like this so that way my tight top is nice and smooth. Just get some more flour on here. Pat this down again. Okay, and usually after I've patted it down once, um, I can only get one out of it each time. So, but we should get at least six out of this. Sometimes I have extra and I end up with a little tiny baby one. All the grandkids think that's the cute one and they want the baby one. All right, and my last one, I'm just gonna kind of form into a little biscuit right there. Okay, so now we have six biscuits right here for our shortcakes. Wash my hands again here. I have made them with the little small cookie cutters before for tea parties and such. But what I'm gonna do here is, I have a whisk somewhere. Okay, not sure where I did with it. I've got another one. I used it earlier. Okay, so I'm just gonna get a little whisk here. And this is just some milk. So I'm just gonna brush the top of these with some milk. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm gonna sprinkle these with some of this vanilla sugar right here. And I want that to stick to these. And then it's gonna form a crispy top on these with a little bit of a sweetness on the top since there's not very much sugar inside them, only two tablespoons. And that's a brush, not a whisk. Oh, <laughs> yes, that is a brush. I have all these utensils out. All right, and then I'm gonna sprinkle them with vanilla sugar. And all vanilla sugar is, is it's plain sugar. And when I use vanilla beans for making anything, I just stick them in here and then it flavors your sugar. And then your sugar will have the aroma and smell and a little bit of flavor of vanilla. So I'll just put a whole bunch of this sugar right on top and now these are ready to pop into the oven. And that they bake at 425 degrees for 10 to 12 minutes. I'll put these in the oven and then I'll bring out ones that are already done. All right, and then I have some that are done right here that I made just before the video. Actually, I'm gonna wipe off this counter really quick. Just so I have a place to put these. some that are already done. I talked about earlier having a little baby one. So you can see I had a little bit of extra dough for a baby one. But I like them to come out really tall like this. They come out nice and flaky. And then all I do is either break them in half or cut them in half if they don't break easily. But they're very nice and flaky inside. And then I'll take our strawberries. These are the ones that I made earlier that are already macerated and have their own syrup on them. I like to take, to do a couple of different things. You can either, I'll do these two different ways. Grab another plate. I'll make these two different ways. This is the way I make them often, just by putting some strawberries on here. And this juice that we have here is going to seep into the bottom of the biscuit right here and soak it up. Give it all that good flavor right there. And then I'll take a little bit of whipped cream that I made earlier as well. All I do is I buy whipping cream, I add some powdered sugar and a little vanilla extract and whip it up. Once you buy, once you start making your own whipped cream, you won't go back to the, the tub stuff. Then I'll put some of that on there and then I'll top it with a little more, with um, the other half of the biscuit, top it with a little bit more strawberries Try to get them to stay on here. Oops, I hit the wrong timer. Right back. It's supposed to be 12 minutes, not two minutes. Then a little bit more whipped cream. And there we have strawberry shortcake 
the traditional way that I always make it. This is what you see on the website. Or we can do this kind, which is why we have this vanilla pudding here. So we'll take another biscuit, break it in half, or you can cut it in half. We'll take a little bit of our lemon pudding and put that on the bottom here, our lemon fruit dip here, and the strawberries right on top of here. And then we'll put our top on. And this one, I'm gonna do it the other way around. I'm gonna put the pudding on the bottom. But it really doesn't matter. You can do whatever you like. And then some more strawberries. And so here we have strawberry shortcake two ways. Either way, they're gonna be a hit. So that's pretty easy. We were able to make these in about 15 minutes. All these pretty quick. And so you can find these recipes again on our website, RockyMountainLodge.com. Click on the recipes tab for the recipes. Or you can buy our cookbook by clicking on the gift shop tab. And come back next week and we're going to be making, we're going to I'm going to start making summer salads for the next few weeks. And so next week we're going to make frog eye salad. If you've never heard of frog eye salad, you're in salad, you're in for a real treat. It's not made with frogs' eyes. They just kind of look like it. But a big hit with grown-ups and kids alike. All right? So thanks for joining me today. So go make some strawberry shortcake while these are all in season. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.